Hey y'all, I want to welcome you to the channel. Um, I'm going to touch on some things that some people may want to talk about, some people may not want to talk about. So before I begin, go ahead and hit that like button as it helps the channel and also subscribe and become a family member. Turn on your notifications. Um, I don't often do videos like this and I don't know how regular this will be on my channel. My channel is a gardening and homesteading channel, but I also do preps. I also do preps and the reason I do preps is for situations that may occur that are out of your control and with everything that happened in 2020 it caught our family and many others off guard so with that I started prepping um, I didn't start right away in March when I lost my job um, mind you I have not gone back to work since then March 13th and it happened to be a Friday um, I started probably August between August and October when I started doing my preps so I'm nowhere near where I need to be but I'm nowhere near where I was so I say that to say have you been watching the news lately if you have there is a cargo ship that's blocking the Suez Canal. Now I'm looking at this headline. It says that it could take weeks to move. Weeks. We get a lot of shipments from overseas. And a lot of it comes in through on these huge cargo ships. Our food. And, and this is blocking... A very important waterway where they receive a lot of traffic there y'all so I'm gonna read some of this because you might not be able to see it from my screen but it says the massive container ship that ran aground in the Suez Canal halting traffic in one of the world's busiest waterways is still stuck the ship became horizontally wedged in the waterway following heavy winds Nearly 1,900 ships passed through the canal during 2020 for an average of 51.5 per day. And that's according to the Suez Canal Authority. This information that I'm reading to you came from CSNBC, so you'll know that, you know, it's a reputable site. Um, the company that's working to dislodge the ship stuck in the Suez Canal says it could take weeks weeks y'all they're already dealing with food spoilage on that ship whatever else they have on that ship we don't know it says the massive container ship that ran aground in the suez canal halting traffic in one of the world's busiest waterways is still stuck as tugboats continue to try to dislodge the ship on thursday and today is friday y'all i think today is the 26th of March a team of experts a team of experts from Smith salvage have been called in to assist in the operation um, became horizontally wedged in the waterway following heavy winds multiple tugboats were sent to the scene to assist to refloat the operation which could take days or even longer we can't exclude it might take weeks depending on the situation. Now, mind you, it's in this waterway, y'all. Traffic cannot, it's just like a highway. Traffic cannot go from either, either direction because of this one waterway. You see where it's stuck at, right? So you got traffic trying to come, say, east and west. Can't do it. The 120 mile long man-made waterway is key point of global trade, connecting a steady flow of goods from east to west. So traffic is not moving y'all from east to west, which means the oil tankers 
can't move. Anything going through can't move. So you're going to start seeing prices of food go up even more. You're going to start seeing a lot of inflation on different items that we buy that you probably wouldn't even think about that would be affected. <sighs> this pandemic, as if, you know, people think that it's over. Everything is stacking up. The deck is being stacked. The minute you think that you're you're getting somewhere in it some place in it where you're comfortable you cannot get comfortable you have to continue to prep if you are prepping you have to think about how would i feed my family how would we get the items that we need if you haven't already started doing that so don't Stop prepping. I cannot say that enough. Gardening to me is a form of prepping because you are extending your pantry with the items that you're growing because you can can the items that you're growing and add to your food pantry. So y'all, I just want to do this video. Not say wanted to do it, but I'm constantly seeing it and it's weighing on me. So I just wanted to talk about it. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit more. Everything from consumer products to machinery parts to oil flows through its waters of the Suez Canal. Like I said, everything flows through it. I'm going to go back up just a little bit so you can see from the satellite image because this can be seen from outer space and that's what this picture was taken from right here. Nothing can flow either direction. It's not like you can turn off and go a different direction if you were on the highway and there was an accident. Maybe you can get off on the next exit. You can't do that here. Nearly, well, I said that nearly 1,900 ships passed through that canal in 2020. And that was a satellite image that shows the buildup of ships on either end of the waterway. It says the accident comes as the global supply chain already struggles to keep a pace with demand. The shortages have been most acute in the chip industry forcing automakers to suspend operations do you hear me do you hear what i'm just what i just read and i didn't read this beforehand because i wanted to hear it i wanted to see it as you're seeing it the accident comes as global supply chain already struggles to keep a pace with demand the shortages have been most acute in the chip industry, forcing automakers to suspend operations. This ship blocking the passage is going to affect us in so many ways. So here are a few more images of the Ever Given and how it's blocking the Suez Canal. They say that there is flooding on part of the ship. It is in jeopardy of tipping over. A prolonged blockage could lead to significant disruptions to global trade, skyrocketing shipping rates further increase of energy commodities and an uptick in global inflation. I'm telling you, if you are not prepared, you better get prepared. Because while they're saying it could take weeks, we don't know how long it could take. 
And even those two weeks is going to cost us a whole lot. Gas prices have already gone up. Been going up before this ship even got blocked. I mean, before the ship blocked the passage. It says, meanwhile, analysts have highlighted increased risk of attacks on oil facilities amid greater energy supply chain vulnerability and regional tensions. They were even saying they needed to have patrols out there where that cargo ship is out of fear of pirates attacking. This is the ship again. You see all those containers on there? The ever given a 220,000 ton mega ship, nearly a quarter mile long with a 20,000 container capacity and strong winds managed to blow that big old ship sideways where they lost control of steering y'all and they using tugboats like they do when you on a cruise ship you know and the cruise ship about the dock and they use the tugboats to help dock the ship this is is more than a cruise ship here it says while we believe the hope we believe and hope keyword hope the situation will get resolved shortly there are some risk of the ship breaking In this scenario, the canal would be blocked for an extended period of time, which could result in significant disruptions to global trade, skyrocketing shipping rates. The ship could break. What? Y'all, I'm, I'm in shock reading it. But I'm not going to I'm gonna say I'm surprised and not surprised because this is why preppers prep. I'm not the serious prepper, you know, the world is ending type prepper. But I am the one that I want to make sure my family is taken care of, has what they need. Um, you just got to stay on it. So it says what? does this mean for global trade the shipping delays could impact everything from the clothes and shoes you ordered online to gym equipment electronics food and energy supplies meaning gas prices could get higher you hear that higher they're already high they're already high y'all so i know what i'm gonna be doing and I don't like to sit and buy gas because if you keep gas for too long, it could go bad. Um, but I will be getting some gas while it's at the rate that it is, even though that's high. Do you remember when gas went up some years ago and they were running out of gas? Suez Canal container blockage to further rattle global chain supply to drive pricing higher given pent-up demand and that's in a research the jp morgan research the man-made suez 120 miles long is a key transit point connecting east and west ships waiting to transit the suez canal as of the 25th of march 2021 let me tell you the ships that are waiting to get through and how, you know, it's going to affect us. They have the section on this graph that says other, livestock, chemical tankers, 
product tankers, vehicle carrier, general cargo, crude oil tankers, container ships, bulk carriers. That's a lot. While it's still early to say what the full impact of the tanker crisis will be, the key word here in this is crisis. The bank experts that in the near term, the blockage is likely to add to industry supply strains, which are already hampered by ongoing supply chains, bottlenecks in the form of port congestion, and shortages of both vessels and containers due to COVID-19. Ships are going to have to shift to entirely different routes. Will result in longer voyage times and causing further delays. I saw the ships were backed up, y'all, just like a, a accident on the highway. And mind you, you... May, if you're close to an exit on, on the highway, you can get off. But if you kind of in between, you're stuck to either they um, relieve some of the traffic behind you because they were just stacking up and stacking up until you can then back your ship up where they can help you back your ship up because you can't do it by yourself. And it says, and those delays could be more than 15 days for many ships whose alternative is sailing around Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa, which analysts say would increase shipping times by up to 30%. Expect your goods to be late, basically, and expect things to cost more, definitely. The immediate impact of delays in the canal will center on European Asian trade, adding delays to already disrupted supply chains affecting oil and refined products. <sighs> Chow. This is a lot. Already impacted oil prices. Already already and this is just what day two three it's crazy crazy news of the suez blockage drew in buyers and along with other economic data contributed to international benchmark brent brent cruise one month futures contract gaining its biggest one day gain in nearly a year to close at $64.41 on Wednesday. In the meantime, between 5 to 10% of all seaborne oil is transported through the Suez, meaning that for each day that the ship remains stuck, it delays the shipment of another 3 million to 5 million barrels of oil per day. Several tankers carrying jet fuel and gas oil the canal is also a transit point for around eight percent of global natural gas so it's saying that the only winners in this the the canal blockage is certainly not bad news for everyone Spot freight rates are set to jump even higher on pent-up demand, making money for the operators. So you think they're in a hurry? Do you really think they're in a hurry to move that if it's going to make them money? <sighs> it says a more prolonged closure of the Suez Canal could see container shipping as the biggest beneficiary while tanker dry bulk and air cargo might also see some higher rates so it's winners in this but it's not gonna be us the little man is not gonna win in this one we're gonna reap that cost that these big businesses are are gaining from 
It says, in the meantime, the Suez Canal's blockage will add to an already rising Middle East risk premium for oil and refined products. The uncertainty over the blockage duration creates a window of opportunity for state and non-state actors seeking to maximize the impact of attacks against tankers and energy um, infrastructures in the um, Persian Gulf and Red Sea. And this is what's blocking. You see, if this thing is sideways, y'all. <laughs> sideways. <sighs> that is absolutely crazy. So I just want I don't want to make this a super long, long video, but you get the jit. You understand what I'm saying. Let me go back to this. So if you're not prepared, please think about buying a little extra for your household while the prices are where they are. Um, meat prices and stuff have already been going up before this happened. They will continue. Oil prices, they will continue. Electronics, they will continue. Everything you use in your household will go up. So prepare yourself. Make sure your family have what they need. I'm not telling you that's what you need to do. I'm just letting you know it's something you should consider. Because I, I had to sit and consider it last year when I was one of those ones out panic buying toilet paper and food. Um, because we, we would only shop for maybe two to three weeks as opposed to three months to six months of shopping. Um, so y'all take care, stay safe. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you um, hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel. And if I have to come back and make another video, I will. I hope that I did not offend anybody by doing this video. It was not meant for that. It's just awareness, trying to make people aware of the things that are going on. Because sometimes we know that th things are going on, but we don't really want to process it because life is already stressful enough. So y'all stay blessed, stay prayed up. Whoever you pray to, stay prayed up. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Prep today so you can eat more than just one day. Sow something today so you can grow something. Bye, y'all. If you ever feel alone Cause yeah, sometimes we'll feel alone Welcome back to the channel.